This is a Raspberry Pi single board computer, and today I'm going to show you how to turn it into a console. Now, most of the time, people tell you to install RetroPie on your Raspberry Pi. Now, RetroPie is a software that allows you to run retro games on your Raspberry Pi, and it's great and all, but it's not really what I'd use anymore. So what I'd use instead is a software called Botticera, which is basically Raspberry Pi on steroids. Now, it can run old um, games, like old retro games and stuff, which is what most people use it for, but it, with a little bit of configuration, it can run newer consoles too, like the Nintendo Switch and Xbox 360 and stuff. And the craziest part is that at only $60, the Raspberry Pi 5 has a 2.4 gigahertz processor, which is over twice the speed of the Nintendo Switch's 1.02 gigahertz processor. And so today, I'm going to show you how to make your own gaming console that's not only cheaper, but more powerful. Alright, so what do you need? You need a Raspberry Pi 3 or higher. You probably could do it with a 0 or a 2, but don't expect to run anything more than like NES. You're also going to need a micro SD card and a micro SD card reader. And then you will, of course, need a power supply for your Raspberry Pi so you can turn it on. And then, you're going to need a controller. You can use a keyboard, but I'd recommend a controller because it's a console, and you can't really call it a console if you're using a keyboard. So the first step is to install a software called Botticera on the Raspberry Pi. And so to do that, we are going to need a um, PC. And on your PC, you're going to want to go to... Um, Botticera.org slash download, and then over here, scroll down and find your model of Raspberry Pi, and then click it, and start the download. Alright, so now that we have it downloaded, we um, need some way to install it on the Raspberry Pi. So you're going to want to go back into your browser, and you're going to want to head over to Raspberry Pi dot com of links in the description to everything and then you're going to want to go up here to software and then go down to where it says install raspberry pi os using raspberry pi imager and click download for windows and just give it a second to download all right and once it's finished downloading you're going to want to go over here and double click on it and then hit yes and install, and then finish. All right, and now you should have the Raspberry Pi Imager installed, which is the software that we're actually going to use to put um, Botticera on the Pi. So you don't want to grab your Pi's SD card, take it out of your Pi if it's in there, and put it in your SD card reader, and then plug it into your PC. Ooh, it's hot. All right, and then you're gonna. All right, and then you're gonna want to go over here to choose device, and select your Raspberry Pi model. For me, the Raspberry Pi three, and then over here where it says choose OS, we're gonna go down here to use custom, and then select the Botticera image that we just downloaded. Double click it. And then hit choose storage and find the SD card that you just plugged in and hit next. And then hit yes and yes. And just give it a second. All right, and once it's done, you should see something that looks like this. Just hit continue. And then boom, you can just go ahead and unplug your SD card from the computer and then plug it into your Raspberry Pi like that, and then plug in your Pi and connect it to your monitor or TV. All right, and once it boots up, you should see a screen that looks something like this. Now you're gonna wanna take your controller. Now, if you have an Xbox controller, you could just plug it in like that, and it should automatically recognize it, and you should just be able to start playing. But if you have any other kind of controller, you will have to set it up. So you're actually going to want to go ahead and plug your keyboard in first. 
and then you can see I can control it with my keyboard. And then you're going to want to plug your controller in that you want to configure. All right, and then you're going to want to hit the start button on your keyboard. I think it's usually enter. And then you're going to want to go down to controller and Bluetooth settings. Now here you can set up your Bluetooth or USB controller. Now I just have a USB controller here that I want to configure. So we'll go up to controller mapping. OK. And then grab the controller that you want to set up and just hold any button on it. And then you can just go ahead and set all the buttons on it. So, And then if you want to skip something, you just hold something. Start. Um, all right. And then once you're done, just go down here. Hit OK. And yeah, set select as hotkey. And boom. Now you can see I have an unsupported controller set up like that. But anyways, I'm going to switch back to my Xbox controller because it's way better. Who needs this? And all right, so you can see we already have some games installed on here. So let's go ahead and play one. Um, what should we play? Um, what's on here? So let's play one. Um, let's play Classic Kong. It's literally the only game that I've ever actually played that comes installed on here. And you can see it's super easy to use, super easy to set up. Um, this is way better than RetroPie. Oh, crap. Oh, crud. I suck at this. And if you want to leave the game, you just press select and start. Hold select and start at the same time, or whatever your hotkey is. And boom. Now we are back in um, the menu. Now, as you can see, we don't have a lot of games on here, and a lot of these are like weird games that I don't even recognize. So I'm actually going to show you how to add more games to this. All right, so to do this, we will actually need our um, Pi to be connected to the internet. So you're going to hit Start to open up the menu. And we're going to go down to Network Settings. And then over here, we can go over and enable Wi-Fi go down here to where it says Wi-Fi SSID and select your network. All right, then you go down here and input your password. All right, and just give it a second to connect. Once it gets connected, you should see a little Wi-Fi symbol up in the top right corner. There it is. Let's go into network settings. And now we can see our IP address. So you're going to want to write down your IP address and remember it. And now let's switch back over to our computer again, but make sure you keep your Pi on so that you can connect to it. All right, so now that we're back on our computer, we're going to want to go into the File Explorer here. And then up in the top here, we're going to want to type backslash backslash and then the IP that we just copied and then hit Enter and give it a second to connect. All right, and so now you can see we have this folder here called Share, and we've pretty much just remotely connected to our Raspberry Pi now, so we can remotely upload ROMs without dealing with USB sticks and all that crap. So you're gonna wanna go into the Share folder, go over here to the ROMs folder, and now all these folders, now we can put all our games in these folders. So we have a folder for every single game out there. And basically, um, you're going to need all your games in ROM files. So basically, every time you want to play like a retro game, um, it has a ROM file. And so you're going to need um, the ROM files for all the games you want to play. Um, I already have some, but if you don't have any, you can um, just look up on Google. Um, uh, just look up on Google ROM download for whatever console you have. And so I already have a bunch of ROMs download over in my ROMs folder. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy them into the right folder. So I have all my SNES ROMs right here. I have all my SNES ROMs. I'm going to copy them. And then I'll just go put them in the 
uh, where is it? The SNES folder. I'll go put them in the SNES folder and just paste them in just like that. And it should just take a second. All right, and now you can see we have all our um, ROMs in here. And I'm going to go ahead and do this for all the rest of my games too. All right, now that we have all the games in the correct folders, we can go ahead and switch back over to our Pi. All right, now that we're back over in our Pi, we can just hit Start. And then go over here to Game Settings and hit Update Game List. And now it'll just automatically update the game list to include all the games we add. So now you can see all my games are here. Now the problem is you can see these games don't have any artwork or anything on them. So you're going to press Start. And I think there is a way to manually add artwork and stuff. But that takes a long time, so I'm going to show you how to use the scraper. Basically, what the scraper does is um, it'll just look up all your games in a database and then automatically find all the artwork and stuff for it. So you can select where you want to scrape from, and then there's a bunch of other um, there's a bunch of other settings here. But you're going to want to go over to here to Systems Included. And you're going to want to select all the systems that you want to scrape. I'm going to select them all. And then hit Scrape Now. And you can see in the top right corner that it will start scraping. All right, and once that's done, you can go ahead and update your game list again. And now you can see we have all the artwork automatically. And now you can see we should automatically have all the artwork ready to go so let's go ahead and play one of these games let's play road rash 64. it's honestly probably one of my favorite n64 games of all time it's surprisingly fun oh we forgot which button codes yo i got some air dude that was actually pretty crazy bro i'm going like 126 on a bike bro oh there's a cop I like it when there's cops. <laughs> Yo, there again. Oh, if that guy hadn't hit me, I wouldn't have flown over that car and I would have, like, smashed in that car and died, bro. Oh, crap. Ooh. See, this is why you have to take a test to get a motorcycle license. Alright, anyways, that's all I have for this video. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe, and leave a comment if you had any problems, or just leave a comment, because I like it when people comment. Thanks for watching.